Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about identifying motor abilities. So again, as we talked about in the last video, motor abilities are attributes of an individual that are relatively consistent, enduring traits that can be developed. Uh, one ability can be necessary for many different skills. So like static balance, for example, is a motor ability that will serve us well in all sorts of different skills. One skill may require many different motor abilities. So think of like a tennis serve. Uh, so there's a lot involved in executing a good tennis serve. And so there are many different motor abilities that factor in and are required for a good tennis serve. Um, so identifying the abilities that are required for a specific skill is useful for improving learning and performance of that skill. Um, so if we can look at that tennis serve and break it down into the specific motor abilities that are required for that skill, then that can help us make sure that the person who's learning the tennis serve uh, is learning and developing the correct motor abilities to really improve performance in that skill. Um, so a taxonomy of motor abilities has been developed. It was developed by Dr. Edwin Fleischman. Um, and so the goal when this taxonomic system was developed was to create a sort of minimalistic inventory of abilities. So there are lots of abilities that are not included in this taxonomy, uh, but it was meant to include kind of the minimum amount, the minimum ones, uh, so that we can better classify motor abilities um, for the purposes of teaching and learning and motor control. Um, the assumption is that all humans have these abilities and it's possible to measure them. Um, so an individual's motor abilities indicate limits that influence a person's potential for achievement in motor skill performance. So if we can identify the motor abilities, abilities that are required for a skill and then work to improve them, that will increase the, that person's potential for achievement in that skill. Um, so in this particular taxonomy, um, the skills or the abilities are broken into two broad categories, perceptual motor abilities and physical proficiency abilities. Um, so the perceptual abilities are more cognitive, like decision making, nervous system type abilities, and they're more generally related to fine motor performance. Uh, compared to physical proficiency abilities that are more about the, the physical ability of the muscles and bones and joints. So it's more generally related to gross motor skill performance. Um, so here is a list of the perceptual motor abilities that are included in this particular taxonomy. Again, it's not all inclusive. This is just sort of a minimalistic list. Um, so I'm not going to run through all of these here, uh, but if you want to read through them, I encourage you to pause here and, and read each of these. Um, but the overall, the theme here is that these are cognitive, these are perceptual, these are related to fine motor control. So like, for example, control precision, the ability to make rapid and precise movement adjustments, reaction time, ability to respond rapidly to a signal when it appears. So these abilities are related more to nervous system function, decision making, and perception of environment and the movement. Uh, then we have the category of physical proficiency abilities, which again, pause here if you want to read through these quickly, but um, overarching or overall, we're looking at strength and flexibility here mostly. Um, so the maximum force a person can exert, um, the strength of the trunk muscles, ability to make repeated rapid trunk flexing movements. So we're looking at the abilities of the actual physical plant outside of just the control system. So looking at uh, the muscles, bones, and joints and how we're able to coordinate and move those. Um, so then there are some other motor abilities. These are just a few others that are not included in this taxonomy, but are worth mentioning. Um, so static and dynamic balance, like I discussed a little bit in the previous video, um, and then a few others related to the perceptual system, like uh, visual acuity, visual tracking, and eye hand and eye foot coordination. And we'll talk more about how our perceptual systems, how our sensory systems are very important in motor control and coordination. 
Um, so why do we want to test for these motor abilities? So there are two main reasons that we would test motor abilities. Um, the first is to predict future performance. Um, so somebody might take an aptitude test when they join the military, or um, if they want to enter into a certain profession, they might be asked to complete an aptitude test um, that could be related to motor abilities. Um, so like, for example, you might want to find out if this person has motor ability that's required to become a surgeon, or do they have the motor ability required to play professional tennis? Um, so sometimes we want to predict future performance. Uh, the second reason would be to evaluate the causes of performance deficiencies or to test the effectiveness of an intervention like physical therapy during rehabilitation, for example. So sometimes we wanna see um, if there are issues with performance or if we are, if the person is growing, developing, rehabilitating, um, just learning a new skill, it's helpful to be able to evaluate that progress and to find out um, if there's lack of progress, uh, what is the deficiency, what is still missing, um, or maybe they are making progress, but you want to find out what is the next step going to be in this rehabilitation program or um, in the training of this athlete, what is the next step? And so you can figure that out by finding out which motor abilities uh, the person has strengths and weaknesses with. All right. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.